Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clarissa Trading Frank. It's approximately 9.09 .09 p.m. Uh, on an absolutely beautiful uh, East Coast, uh, well, at least New York, New Jersey uh, weather, uh, summer evening. It is uh, September 16th, 2018. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. This is our strategic weekend Sunday webinar, which are extremely, extremely important. I cannot emphasize how important these webinars are prior to starting the week, the trading week or investment week, whichever way you want to put it, um, in a few hours um, tomorrow morning in 12 hours uh, at uh, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, on that note, a um, couple of quick plugs for Clueless Safe Trading, very important. Uh, as you know, the all the videos, all these video blogs, what we call video cast, are going to be, are always uploaded to the Google YouTube channel, through the Safe Trading Google YouTube channel. Highly suggested that everyone else who's going to be listening to this and uh, and and, uh, and others from the outside uh, can certainly learn a lot about markets, about trading, and about anything that has to do with U.S. financial markets and how to make a couple of dollars out of it or a lot of dollars out of it. Um, we also have a very exciting and powerful Instagram channel that I have asked and requested all members to follow and have all their friends and colleagues who have any interest in the markets to follow. Um, and um, please do so. Uh, I'd like to grow that follower account. It's primarily for promotional purposes, so get our word out. It is not there for real-time content, but it's great to see the highlights of many trades that we do, and um, and it's you know it's great exposure for us. So please spread the word. And uh, like I believe, I don't ask too much for my members, but that's the least that I can ask. The second thing that I do ask for my members, and I think it's only fair is that instead of congratulating me, Frank, you're great, you know, thank, you know, this and that, which is all related to making money, obviously, of my work, of my hard work, I appreciate the thank yous, but I'm a pretty straightforward, humble guy, okay? Your thank yous and your compliments to me mean nothing. Honestly, they don't. Yes, it makes me feel good that I'm helping, I'm pro providing a, a value-added service for you guys to, um, for all of you to take advantage of and make money, see the market in a very different way, understand that all these different flash crashes and everything in the end always are tactical moves that land up somewhere, mostly on the upside, primarily because we are in a primary bull trend market, um, uptrending market as I've clearly shown in my multiple real-time and long-term charts. What's important is Go out there, get a referral. Many of you have, and I thank you sincerely for that. Uh, my business is not to grow the service to a level where I cannot concentrate on making my own money, paying back my own debts, paying, you know, and, and taking care of my family, right? My goal is to have a good number of solid people who are serious about the market. Many of you will fall off. That's normal. Okay? That's normal. Not, trading is not for everybody. Trading is a very specialized game, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And, uh, and the fact is that it is, it is not for everybody. And if, if trading was that easy, like they say in the business, then everybody would be a freaking trader making millions of dollars. But no, it's not. There's only a select few who will, over time, make some very decent money. Only a select few. So I don't feel, um, uh, again... It took me, I mean, I'm, I look, I love the markets. And uh, some of you follow football games and baseball games and, and, ba and, and basketball and sports. Like, you know, every stats in the world. Well, I know heck of a lot about the markets, po politics and everything that goes on. That's my passion. Okay? That's my passion. That's what I get a kick out of. So my point is that um, many of you won't make it. I know I'm being very direct. Many of you will be very frustrated. You'll give up right at the point when, when you, it's just clicking in. One thing I've learned over the years, one thing I learned over the years, and this is the God honest truth, that at the point of no return, when you think it's all over, 
because you're trying so hard and the market's slapping you back and forth and you're not, you know, and you're doing some, you know, silly stuff to say the least because you're not trading off these extremely powerful precise tactical charts. You're using your own emotions and stuff. And the markets, like they say in New York, is a complete, you know, the B word, all right? The market is in the business of slapping you and taking your money away. We are in the business at Clueless A Trading through our tactical mission of trading charts in the business of slapping the market and taking the money from them. And I've continuously showed that. And I hope all of you realize that. I'm not looking for accolades and I'm some sort of God, like, you know, trading God. And I'm not. But I'm damn goddamn smart when it comes to understanding the volatility in the market, understand the nuances of what goes on and acting on it and sharing all this stuff with you guys. So coming back to it, your dedication, your passion, your, your ability to learn and act is going to walk is what's going to keep you in the markets. The markets are the sweetest things ever in the world. Good, bad and ugly. They're the fastest ways you can ever make money. And that's a fact. There is no inventory. There is no warehouse that um, there is no warehouse where you're storing your stocks or your trades. It's all digital. It's all on your screen. With the flick of one button, in less than a second, you're out of a trade with a 300% profit or a 20%, 60% loss. And the worst case scenario, 100% loss on your option. Best case scenario in option. 2,000%. We've shown those. The worst you can lose in your option based on your position sizing and stuff is 100%. Now, if you're dumb enough to put all your money in one or two trades and then think that's going to basically make you a huge winner, which happens, which many of our members have done, then that's fine. But what if it goes the other way? You're done. So what do you do? You click cancel. It's happened to so many members. Cancel Clueless A Trading. What is that cancel Clueless A Trading going to do for you? Yeah, I'm going to lose a member. Many more will come. But it's you who, who are just shooting yourself in the foot. When you cut yourself off from a service like ours at Clueless A Trading, which is most probably the most knowledgeable, intellectual, and we are intellectual elitists. We're not trailer park trash here, and I'm not being racial or anything like that, political. We're not trader trailer park trash. We're not jumping around because we're making a point or two on something. We're showing you some of the biggest moves that the billion-dollar players are paying their analysts to explain to their traders. That's what we're doing. So you cutting yourself off completely out of Kulusei trading, you're doing yourself a disservice, not me, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I'm saying. But you're not slaves to Clueless A Trading. You're simply going to use us as a tool to enhance your knowledge, your trading ability, and move forward. So, that's it. On that note, thank you for attending. Love you guys. You know that. All right. Um... Just want to make sure why this is not clicking because this should click so we can see the futures. It seems like it's stuck at the. I oh, 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 that's beautiful. These are actual, you know, these are the NASDAQ futures. These are two most important things right now. All right. That's, a, that's the E minis. And there you go are the, are the NQs, the NASDAQ futures, live in real time. So, um, a couple of things I want to mention. This is going to be a very critical week. Uh, Lisa, I really don't care what I'm using because I'm just putting in right now what they are giving me. So I don't really care. No offense meant to anybody. Whether she Okay, this is what she wrote. And please get a microphone next time. It says ESZ2 to 18 is what we should be using. Z is, Z is December. Uh, it looks like you're still using ESU, which is September. December ESZ is currently trading for 2906.25. So looking at my toss screen here, this is quad. 
is 2906.75. And I don't know why this is showing that. That is good information, actually. And uh, I'm just going to try to bring it out here. But it is still relevant because it is still showing the September ones, I understand, but it's still moving with the market. And I'm just going to stick to it right now because I just started using futures uh, to track. I normally do it on Think or Swim um, here on the quad system. So I'm just going to show you because this is the overall thing. This is not an ACS session. So thank you for the information because looking on my left hand side, on one of my other screens, yes, I do see that e minis right now are down 450, four, four, uh, four and a half points at 2907. Thank you very much. So I appreciate that. All right, uh, let's get into it here. What I want to show very quickly is uh, uh, some uh, how to basically read these charts, okay? I trade off charts. I have a lot of opinions. I have my own analysis, which are mostly correct, and it's a fact. Some of them are wrong, but I think I'm inside Donald's head. All right, good old Donald. From there's a lot of game theory getting played out, which many of you don't quite understand. Uh, maybe your lives have been very cushioned. You don't quite understand that lives are, you know, human life, just like in trading, are very tricky things. Some of you think that everything is just straight line. A person is bad, a person is good. No. A great person can be terrible in some aspects of their lives. Same thing with markets. So what's going on right now is a heavy-duty poker game. And I try to read it extremely well and analyze it extremely well. Over the weekend, what was the headline? Trump plans to announce, which we heard on Friday, 200 billion in China tariffs at 10%. At 10%, not at 25%. He wants to slap it at 10%. And it will be announced on Monday or Tuesday, which, by the way, is going – this is right along where our trade delegation is going to be in China talking to them. Trump is saying slap them the 10 percent tariff, not the 25 percent, before they get there. Whoopee. Real exciting stuff. And it says – and it says – and remember, these are news reports coming out, not yet validated by the White House and the Trump administration. It says China considering backing out of upcoming trade talks. Can happen. So we're prepared. If China backs out of upcoming trade talks, the markets are going to fall 600 points. But that's not going to be, we won't find that out till the latter part of the week when I assume we might get some real rocky uh, um, choppy volatility. So we're not here to analyze Donald's tweets, we're here to analyze charts based on what can happen if that, if, if, if uh, President Trump goes ballistic on the Chinese prior to the talks. Is everyone with me on this or not? I don't expect yep. you guys to be like game theory specialists. Game theory, you know, does, can anyone explain to me what game theory is? And then I do not want uh, DC trader to answer this question. What is game theory? And I'm not talking about baseball and, and football and stuff. What is game theory in life and and in markets and in policy? What is game theory? Please, and make this quick. I just want, because I want you to understand because this is very critical to our trading and me explaining what, you know, what, what I do. So very quickly, Lisa, what is game theory? Game theory is what we think will happen, basically, based on everything that we know. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to wait one-to-one -one for everyone to understand. So, Lisa, I'm going to explain it in very simplistic, direct terms. So, this is what game theory uh, is, okay? I don't have my little uh, writing board here. For every – so, let's say, you know, there's a big situation, right? Like Jersey, you know, Jersey Shore situation. What was his name? Situation what? Sorrentino? Okay, so there's a big situation going on. And what's the situation? China, for now. Because the markets love to pick on one situation at a time. One, it was North Korea, it was Greece, it was Brexit. So now the situation is China. So for one situation, one problem, there is going to be multiple variables, right? Or solutions. So each of, so based on that one situation, which is the big China news right now, 
trade, there is going to be multiple outcomes. Multiple outcomes. Now, game theory is used extensively in sports, especially in American football, which it says, okay, if this happens, he's going to uh, 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 pull that play, and that's why you got those Apple iPods, uh, iPads going, and they're telling them exactly you know, what to do, right? Not so much in other sports. So football, especially American football, is extreme game theory. Like if that guy goes, that quarterback goes this way, you're going to basically, uh, 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 this, is, this is the play you're going to do. You understand what I'm saying? So, that, so in politics and in trading, game theory is extremely important. And in tactical trading, which we specialize in, game theory is very important because we look at different outcomes and we're prepared for it. So that's why the charts are so important because that's your playbook. So for every situation, every news, and 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 for every you know and every reaction, there's going to be multiple outcomes, and each of those multiple outcomes might have sub outcomes. Okay, so that's called game theory. Now, if you think this is too highbrow stuff, like it's not, because when the, Trump says, "Okay, I'm going in, and I'm going to go that," the markets fall 144 points, and then what? Then we have a massive reflex bounce. And intraday, we can scalp some serious money. And the charts didn't break. Yet he said, oh, I'm going to slap $200 billion worth of tariffs before we even get to Beijing. Didn't he say that on Friday? So why didn't the markets just go down 500 points like it used to months ago? Exactly. So what you guys do. So this is the game theory part. There are multiple outcomes to a particular problem based on the variables or, 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 or solutions that go into it. So in other words, they're going to be Mnuchin and the team, I believe, are going to be in China that they have announced this week, right? So in that case, that's great news. So the market should be up 500 points. Markets are up. We can see that in the background. Beautifully up. All those 2905 uh, uh, SPX calls paid big. Paid big from the beginning of the week. Which, ladies and gentlemen, you guys are looking at massive, massive reversals. Maybe many of you sat around and just watched, right? Well, I can't do anything about that. All right. So. Trading is not a spectator sport. You got to be involved in it. If you're waiting for some perfect outcome, well, it ain't going to come. The perfect outcomes are buying these type of big reversal lows. I keep on showing buying the stochastic, slow stochastics at deep oversold levels and turning crossover. And the good news is that many of you are finally. And many of you are still stuck in the mud, primarily mental mud in your head. Can't help you on that. So, so the game theory part is why did we fall like 500 points when, when, when he said, no, we got one big fat candle. Ten minutes. Anyone remember that? Sure you remember that. Friday. Boom. We're up Alibaba like a, a good, uh, look at my other screen. We're up to like 168, looking all great. Boom. Falls to 163. Ends the day at around 165. Because Baba is the first proxy to the China negotiations, right? The chips did pretty damn good. Like that. Tesla, but kicked the butt out of the shorts. So it doesn't really matter. But China-related stocks we're talking about that we are basically playing at this point. Not to mention that I delivered you guys some IPOs that were up a gazillion points from the time that I asked you to buy it, which was 24 hours ago. If anyone cares to remember, and I O Q T T the same day almost doubled, and some of you did play it, and I'm like yes, and the ones who did play it are excited because they're like yes, they posted on the chat room, and most of you just sat and watched. God bless you all. So, so saying all that, that. Uh, that uh, so baba so so this is what happened but then what happened 
So game theory is multiple outcomes for a certain set set of variables that go in. Probability. It's a game of probability. Okay. What is the probable outcomes of for a particular problem or situation based on the variables that go in? And the variables are at this point from the trade standpoint, trade negotiations. They're still talking. And of course, the public trade negotiations when they actually land in Beijing. And at the time that, remember, the Chinese came here. End of story about that, all that. So let me clear that out. So what do we do with these charts? I love this chart, technically speaking. Not to mention that my good friend Donald, my next door neighbor from New York, might wake up at 6 in the morning and says, no, I'm going to go from 10% tariff to 20% tariff. So we're prepared for that. We have fixed calls, don't we? Cheap ones that are at 60 cents that barely budged on this move down on Friday because I knew they were going to bounce when well, one of the variables I knew that the market was going to bounce when my fix calls didn't explode to kingdom come from, uh, uh, um, you know, from what, 50 cents? I'm like, what's going on? It barely went to 70. Yeah, it's still 40% move. But if there was a real climactic situation, and I'm going to show you the VIX chart too, which I already did before, the VIX would have just gone boom. So this is what happened on that news. So what happens with other services? And I will pummel down the other services, the retail emotional trader services that a lot of people follow and stuff. Well, God bless them. But they're a bunch of emotional freaks. They bail. Short the market. Short the market. That's it. You know, here we come. <laughs> Great. Short the market. Markets hit lower. Hits my line. This is your look. I called these bear kill zones weeks ago. Both the bear kill zones, which was basically between 2894 and 2913, were engaged. We're engaged. And many of you, I should say some of you, and us, we scalp those spy and SPX calls for high double digit to triple digit percentages. And if I ask right now who did, I'll probably get two people in here who's gonna say, yes, I did. So I'm not gonna even bother asking because that's not my job. My job is to show and for your job is to act as you wish. So every single time we have had tr these trade tweets and comments Primarily for from good old President Trump, we have had these type of collapses. It's not the end of the world. Because this level here, this chart is so precise. It is so sickeningly precise. I'm being dead serious that it is amazing. Every single line, the channels drawn, the breakout zones, the support zones, the downtrending, uh, uh, downtrend lines, what we call the DT lines. The reversal point marked by markers. A child can read this chart. It really can. It's adults who are in the room who have the problem. It's so precise, not even funny. We have the internals and the slow stochastics. I show this all the time. I've explained it many times. I'll explain it again. When it gets down to these oversold levels, it tends to have a sharp bounce. Sometimes few times it might just kind of dawdle around like a fat duck okay like uh, just moving around and then this is what happens that's the more trickier part now all this happens within 24 to 48 hours look at the dates here 6th of august i'm sorry 6th of september 7th of september 9th of september obviously this is you know over the weekend but otherwise, once you get down here, generally speaking, you tend to basically have a oversold bounce. When you get overbought, you tend to reset to oversold. 
There is nothing magical about this. Trading is not something you have to overthink if you are a tactical trader. Trading will mess with your brains and make you look and sound so stupid if you are a retail emotional trader. I'm not saying don't go with your guts. Go with your guts. But if you stick to making, if you want to be a successful trader going with your gut feelings, well, you better take a heck of a lot more really high-end probiotics because your gut's not going to tell you anything because, again, that's serious. Don't, don't, you, none of you really understand deep down hardcore game theory in politics and Wall Street and trading. It's hard. You have to be deep into it. Take it. These are words of wisdom coming from a guy who's not that wise, but who has learned it from the canyons of Wall Street where I used to work and myself. Believe me. So, saying all that, what's wrong with this chart? Can anyone tell me what's really wrong with this chart? And please, be forthcoming. Tell me what is wrong with this chart, other than the fact that, you're, that some of you are doing like completely stupid trades. What's wrong with this chart? From a technical standpoint, please, I want somebody to step up and say, hey, I see something really wrong with this chart. And don't worry, I don't bite. Children, I need some responses. Anyone see anything really wrong with this chart? Mary, you see something wrong with the chart? And I'm not saying that there's nothing perfect. I'm just saying technically what you're seeing. The only thing I can right. say is we're entering up uh, on an ascending triangle, getting towards the top. Well, that's highly bullish. God bless you for that. Because <laughs> I, I know. No, I mean, look, I don't know, honestly, if it's an ascending triangle. If it is and we bust out, we're going to get to that 2930 level. Uh, thank you for your response, Mary. Um, this is what I'm looking at, okay? Um, ascending triangles are like this, all right? So basically, you keep on going like that. You keep on going like that. Is that your doggy? No, that's not me. Oh, it's somebody else's doggy? Well, we love dogs, so it's all good. All right, so um, the dog's really excited with this chart. So I like that. Um, so anyway, the ascending triangle goes like this, and boom, it goes nuts, right? So everybody's like, oh, my God, it's going to crash and burn. And, then, and, 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 of course, the internals have to cooperate. What this is really is a channel. This is how you read that, how you, I'm constructing the chart. I have the support and resistances. You can see that. What we see here is a large breakout that uh, culminated in uh, a triple top breakout on the 13th, on the 13th of this week, uh, September 13th. It attempted to break out three times, going all the way back to the 5th of September, um, I would say five times. Right there, right there, when everything's just looking great, you know, it's going boom, comes a tweet. That's serious. That's exactly what happens. The biggest risk in the market is a Trump tweet. Not the fundamentals of the market. Not the thing. Not like, uh, you know, or something coming out of, of, of China. But they've been kind of quiet because they know, they know that if they play really hardball, he's going to slap the thing. We're going to fall to a thousand points. Their market's already in the gutter. They're going to fall harder. The Chinese have been very politely diplomatic, if you guys have noticed, right? They're not calling him names. They're not calling him the orange-headed guy who's losing his, you know, marbles. That's serious, and I love Donald, trust me. All right? But when he's losing his marbles, I will say it the way I see it. So they're not calling him that. They're being diplomatic because they know they have more to lose. But if things really, if the, excuse my French, if the shit really hits the fan, we're all going to lose. They're going to lose harder. But their people are a lot tougher than us, believe me. Americans, we all Americans are a bunch of babies. All right? That's serious, as in softness. The Chinese people in general are very tough people because of what they've gone through. Right? We are in laps of luxury. 
So we think if we get a parking ticket, it's the end of the world. So they, if there is a full-scale trade war, the Chinese economy will crack. Our economy will crack a bit. But we will feel the pain a lot more than they will because just 50 years ago or less, they were out in the fields dropping babies while General Mao Zedong was basically telling everybody to, you know, to, to just keep on, you know, keep on farming. So they've come a long way, but they're a lot tougher than us as human beings. We're a bunch of wusses. Believe me when I tell you, all right? So saying all that, um, let's look at the charts, all right? Enough of the behavioral part of it. So the chart looks pretty good. So this is how you read it. So this is an ascending triangle that uh, our great member Mary was uh, mentioning. So you can look at it as an ascending triangle. Why? Because she was looking at this. Does everyone see what she was what she was talking about? One second, let me get this. This is what she was looking at. Got it? So that's an ascending triangle. So what she implied was that we are going to basically get up here, jostle around, and we're going to break out. And that most probably will happen. But as tactical traders, we have to take one step at a time. Am I clear with everybody on, as to what she meant by the ascending triangle? Yes? All right. Fine. Now, I'm not going to go that far. And look, it's called cognitive bias. Our member here, MB, Mary, is looking at it from a very bullish standpoint. There's nothing wrong with that. Why does, she have a co why does she have a cognitive bias as a bull? Why do you think she has a cognitive bias as a bull, guys? Please, this is important in our trading. And Mary, it's not for you to answer. It's for anyone else to answer. Why does MB, who answered that this is an ascending triangle, why, should she, why did she call it an ascending triangle based on her cognitive bias or her feelings about the market? Why? It's a very simple answer. Because we've been rising for a number of years and because that's what you've taught us. No, 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 no. Because she's making money. <laughs> that's called cognitive bias. It doesn't matter what we've been rising for a number of years. How many people have made $10 million over the last three years on a, on a, a capital outlay of $30,000? $30, that's not the answer. The answer is Mary is doing well overall. She's playing tactical moves. She's playing her ideas. And look, I'm not glorifying Mary. I'm just giving you an exact, exact example. And this is really important to all of you. So she's, it's called cognitive bias of how you look at a chart. She's looking at a chart with a bullish bias because she's feeling good. Because overall, over the last couple of months since she joined, and she was the first one to uh, attest that, she's taken a different approach to it and she's using her own ideas. She was one of the first people on AMD among some of you. So she's using that. She's using my charts. She's, she's managing her trades, taking positions down a lot at the end of the day, things like that. So she's got a good feeling going on. It's called good vibes. So the good vibes relates into the way you look at the market. So she's looking at the market as a bullish uptrending ascending channel. That's the answer. Get it? That's called behavioral finance. Now, if somebody was losing money, they could be Exactly. I mean, and, and doing stupid things or whatever, and many people are, uh, most people are actually, including hedge fund managers, you know, who are out in the, in, in, out in the Hamptons uh, 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 losing billions of dollars for their clients. Yeah. And not even beating the market. Those guys who might be interpreting this as a, as a, let me show you. Oops, sorry. They could be interpreting this as a head. Left shoulder, right shoulder, neckline, and we are going down to 2780. We're going to go back and test 2866. That would be our bearish cognitive bias, the negative cognitive bias. All right? This is the stuff that Goldman Sachs teaches up on the 70th floor, guys. All right? To their traders. And you're getting it for 70, 90 bucks a month. I'm dead serious. So get serious here, guys. So that's, it's called cognitive bias, meaning like how you look at the world. A pessimist, like our good friend DC Trader once answered, 
as I asked the question and no one could answer. A pessimist never says, I'm a pessimist. The pessimist says, I'm, an, I'm a realist. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. And can this happen? Can we get down to 2864 and drop 30 points, which is roughly about 200 points on the Dow or, no, or more? Absolutely we can. That's a possibility. So it depends on how you're looking at. This is the way how I am looking at based on the internals, and this is where we're going to end our session. Because if you can understand this basic chart, which I constantly keep on showing one of them, and these patterns and stuff, you are going to take your trading five steps forward and have a more tactical view of the market. So you have these, this line here, the magenta line, what is this pattern, this magenta line? It goes like this, right there. Focus on this. What is this line? What is this pattern? You have to know pattern stuff. By now, some of you have been here, some of you for your own good. If you don't quite understand patterns, get into it real fast. What is this pattern? Rising wedge. Thank you very much. It's very easy rising wedge okay so we have a rising wedge here rising wedges when to get when they get to the top of the wedge they generally have a profit taking thing i've shown that repeatedly they generally profit take there are multiple rising wedges here look at that what happens profit taking came in and hit some major support levels so once this rising wedge which is this magenta line here that's why i changed the color right um gets up here you are going to get a move back towards the bottom end of the rising wedge to retest it. Standard reset. Either it's going to rise from here or it will create another pullback just the way it did here. Remember, this was a rising wedge. And look what the market did. It was doing this. This was not supposed to happen, but happened because good old Donald decided to blur it off. You know, uh, oh, we're going to slap them with 200 billion before we even start talking to them which by the way, they're already talking to them every day. So bottom line is this was what happened on Friday, but look where we ended up. We had a massive reversal bounce. We were down, what, 150 points on Friday? And we ended up positive. I said, we're gonna go. Am I, was I certain about it? No, but were my charts saying that this consolidation channel, which I'll explain to you quickly, all of you, so you understand. So basically the rising wedge held. What, what did the markets do? And this is why I say these charts are unbelievably accurate. And if you use them correctly, you are going to do so much better in your trading. I have what I just, like I told you, oh, where's my mouse? All right. Like I told you, we this is a major breakout zone. We broke out of that on the 13th. We attempted to break out of that on the 12th. We attempted to break out of it on the 6th. And we finally broke out. This was a big cup. This was a W formation. And I kept on showing it. I kept on saying that probability we're going higher. And this is the hourly chart. This is an hourly chart. It's for traders. And then you got the longer charts that our good member, uh, Lisa, just mentioned, where you see a primary uptrend going higher. So you stay focused on the longer picture, bigger picture, that on the longer term charts, which I constantly keep on posting, nothing changed. So we started this this, this session, uh, futures were down about six points and down about four and a half right now. But look at what I'm looking at. So it broke out here. We broke out, impulse breakout. We hit that 20, we went past that uh, uh, 20, we basically went to that 29, uh, uh, we went to what on Friday? We went to 29.08. That means on the E-minis, it was 29.13, roughly five higher, right? That's how you, that's how you, you know, convert it. So, and then Trump comes in with that instantaneous, tre uh, uh, I was going to say treat. So I think I was talking to my pups. Um, tweet. And boom, we drop. What do we do? We come and retest that rising wedge. Listen, this is not a market grandpa's playing. This is not a market me uh, mom and pop are playing. This is a market algos are playing. 
So play with the algos and you'll be fine because I'm showing you what the algos would do. So what does it do? It comes and retests almost the breakout line, right? The breakout zone right there. You can clearly see that. It tests the lower end of the, it tests the lower end of the, of the uh, rising wedge. And I was watching this. I, of course, watch it. And then it has that big bounce. Now, saying all that, the stochastics, which are the slow stochastics when I show these quad charts, are now starting to bottom. They haven't fully bottomed. That means we can have a little slipping and sliding Monday morning. Futures are down four and a half. Futures could be down 10. We could come back and retest again, which we most probably will. So don't panic. Don't run for the diapers. We could come back and retest 2896. That's six points from where we are right now. That means futures would be down 10 and a half points by the time tomorrow morning it opens. If we hold this, we bounce. Remember, this is a consolidation channel. You get a channel higher, right? Rising wedge, and you get a consolidation. That's why these two red lines are drawn. So we could come down, slip and slide all the way down to 2892. I'm prepared for it. And that's also another downtrend line from way back. That's 2886. Now, if you don't think these things matter to you because you're not trading SPXs, it matters a lot to you because it'll stop you from making stupid decisions to sell something at the lows and watch it ramp up higher as this hits the lows and then crosses over and goes and you're just sitting there watching. And trust me, I know that Retail emotional traders, RET traders do this all the time. And the pain is just like every single time. So you know what they say to themselves? What's with this market? Every time I get in, it comes down. And every time I sell, it goes higher. Isn't that not true? It's the only truth for retail traders. Every time I get in, the market goes down. Every time I, I, try, I sell, it goes higher. Yeah, it's because you're not following the charts. And I'm showing you where they are. I'm not kidding around. Mental calibration. It takes a lot of work. It's not going to come one day. Some people get it real quick, though, because they're really hungry to make money. Like I am. Real money. Because these charts are worth a lot of money. Some of you, eh, they're just going to give excuses. All right. So here's your consolidation channel. We could fall all the way down here. Once it gets really deep oversold, are you, I mean, I'm looking at many different charts. It's not just one. I have to make a determination. Are we going to move sideways? Which means are we going to slip and slide down here? Or are we, are we about to turn? It is not an exact science, but I'm pretty good at it, as you know, of determining whether we're going to have a turn. Overall, the up and I look at this, I look at the longer term pictures, I look to see what's going on behind the scenes, how bad the ugliness is going on between China and, and, the, and, the, and the Trump administration. So I have to take in a lot of variables into the picture to assess whether the game theory is still higher or whether it's going to be way lower. So looking at, looking at this chart, again, you got a rising wedge, you got a channel. Look at these two white lines. Focus, two white lines. We fell out of that channel on Friday. We went back into that channel. I'm talking this channel, okay? There's two white lines going like this. And now, where, where are we? We are attempting to re-enter the channel. And this happens with stocks too, okay? So once we re attempt to re-enter the channel, let's we, we get with a full, full blast. We get a full blast, a green candle move like this. This is known as a breath thrust. Again, familiarize yourself with candles. There's a nice uh, 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 quick candle tutorial on my uh, um, new member intro, but there are fantastic candle tutorials on Google. There are traders out there with, the, like I say, with a million views. Oh, wish I had a million views. They should million view our, our Clueless A trading channel. Okay, so um, who will teach you about candle dynamics? Because these candles are your lifeblood. If you don't understand these candles, how they're moving, what they're doing, it's not rocket science, believe me. 
then you're you're going to fail over and over and over again. So if you get a bullish engulfing candle, which basically is like this, it engulfs the previous couple of candles like that, you are going to go to the upper end of the wedge that's around 29.13. Now, based on this chart here, the 29.13 level is what? Please, need a response. Is what? What resistance. Is resistance. And, yes, and why is it resistance? It's because we've we've tried to get above there previously. So what is that? You're there, but you're not giving the exact thing. It's the previous all-time high, right? It's the all-time high. So yes, it is resistant because it's the previous all-time high. And generally, when something gets to the all-time high, people who bought the all-time highs and then boom, this happened, they tend to sell. So it's resistance. But the answer is it's an all-time high. Now, once it gets to an all-time high, you generally get, and that's where the upper Bollinger is, right there. That's an all-time high. You can see that. So bottom line is that depending on how fast this is moving, and I'm a master of reading these slow stars, and so can any of you, believe me. And the more you look at these things, you see the twitches, you know the market's going higher down. You know whether your spike calls are going to be up 40% or down 40% in the next five minutes. And you can use your own determinants. I mean, I use the stochastics, you use RSI, you can use many other things. But this works very quickly. I mean, they're very easily easy on the eye. So if it gets up here, and I'm seeing that this is still lunging forward, like lunging forward like this, you're going to get a lunge forward like this. This was a major breakout, remember, into the bear kill zone. So that will be a major breakout over this, heading towards the upper end of the channel, which I said has a high probability of occurring which is at 2920, and up here is 2930. End of story. By that time, the stochastics are going to be way overbought. Everyone's going to be super excited. Um, well, some of you will be super excited because you bought the tactical lows. Or some of them will be, or some, many of you retail emotional traders are going to be super excited to buy, 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 excuse me, right at the top. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to create another big consolidation channel and take all your money away. It's not rocket science. The algos see everything you do. Every order you put in, every limits you put in, they see it. It's called the matrix. This is not Star Wars. So bottom line is that we want to position ourselves at these levels. We want to position ourselves at these levels. Or worst case scenario, we uh, well, short term worst case scenario, we want to position ourselves at these levels so that when we do get those reflex bounces, we basically have those days what we call shooting fish in the barrel, which is a terrible thing to say. Why do you want to shoot fish in a barrel? It simply means you basically take money away from the trap shorts and you just sell wherever you want because the prices are just rising and rising. You know those days. I know some of you in here know those days well. And it happened a lot. If, if, if you only are buying, not necessarily the bottom. I'm not going to say you got to buy the exact bottom. But you buy the tactical reversals, even if you buy here, even if you buy here. But the best, the sweetest piece of the pie. I don't even have words to explain it that much, okay? But the sweetest feeling is when you buy the reversal candles at, what time was this? At 8 a.m., that was right when the market started, on the 11th. And I saw, saw this reversal, and I told you guys, buy, buy, buy. Okay, I saw this moving. That's like a confirmed buy. You just, that's a very high probability I'm going to make money by. Like, th that's it. Those, these type of things. If you, you know, and sometimes you get that reversal. But this one was just like the second candle expanded. The third candle just uh, basically told the bears, you are completely out of town. We're going to shoot you. That's what they did to the bears and the shorts that day. However, what happens by the time you feel comfortable as a retail emotional trader to buy? It is 10 a.m. It is 10 a.m. It is 10.30 a.m., 11 a.m. You're feeling good. You're feeling good. Well, the algos know you're feeling good because you're putting your orders in here. And they then take you down. Nothing changed, but they take you down. So what do you do? You feel like crap. You sell, 
you take a 30% loss on those options when you could have bought the meat in the middle right here and made yourself 60, 70, if not more percent. And this is just on the spies and the SPX. Forget about the Googles and the Netflixes of the world, which at this point are jumping three, four, five, six, seven, eight dollars. So if you're waiting for a, con a confirmed buy, well, the confirmed buys are these reversals, not here. Because by this time, the stoves are overbought. And this happens. Then you sell, and then you see big surge the next morning right there. You're like, oh my God. At this point, the algos come in, and there was a systematic sell program on the 12th. I believe that had to do with, uh, I can't remember what day was the 12th. It had to do with um, uh, 12th with Wednesday. Well, normally we get red Wednesdays, resets, uh, but it also had to do with, I believe, um, well, time flies. What was it? Something to do with the, all the internet selling off. Yeah. So um, then we bought because it was deep oversold. And then it went up. This is all pre-market. And then it did this. So what happens with some of you or many out there is that, you never follow the charts. So you think the market is just targeting you. I have news for you. The market doesn't give a shit about us. Excuse my French. They don't know we exist. So if you think you're that special that they're watching your trades, well, either you're putting down a billion dollar trade or a $500 million trade that the Najarian brothers are picking up as well, or you're just in a delusional stage thinking that the market hates you. The market doesn't hate you or love you. You have to hate or love yourself. And the only way you can do that is through this. We got the channels. We got the rising wedges. We got the support lines. We got the slow stoves. And that's all you got to do. And in the meantime, I'm there to the best of my efforts every single day, every single hour, showing you the path, showing you where the buy sells are, and trying to make some, you know, try to make some money. That's it, guys. So I love you all. I hope you, you know, many of you are changing the way you guys are looking at markets and doing things. Uh, and, and if something's working for you, keep on making it work for you. And use these charts as major tools and you'll see the difference. I keep on saying that. That's your NASDAQ chart, which is a little bit different. These are the big sell-offs that we saw on the 12th when everything was being sold off. And then what happened to Apple after that? It went sky high. What happened to Apple on Friday? Pull back a little bit. Big doodly do. Okay? These are the big. This is NASDAQ, right? So this is when the tech sell off. So it's a lot more like up and down choppy. But there's still a trend. There's still a trend. And if you look at the daily, this is the daily futures. Should be coming up. Why is it taking so long? Oops. So the daily futures, if I remove all these lines, let's reveal it. If I remove all these lines, Fibonacci, all this stuff, it looks exactly like the last couple of times when the tech sold off. When they said, that's it, it's over. And what do I like most about it? That the stoves, this is heavy duty selling. This is when they sold the text like nobody's business. What do I like about it? Short term. Well, this is the daily chart. We're not, we haven't crossed over. When you get the crossover, you tend to get a couple of days before, before, a couple of days where you have to have the Netflixes and the Apples up a gazillion points before they really cross over. Then they really run. So we don't have a crossover yet, but we're still kind of attempting to cross over. This is important, just the way we did here. But if you just look at the overall chart, it is still trending higher. So when they, when the gurus on TV tell you that the tech sell-off is completely, you know, just beginning and it's going to be the end of the world, tell them to take a frigging walk into the canal of stupidity. That's it. We'll have a great week this week, guys. It's going to be really, it's going to be a lot of structured volatility. Um, Trump instructed trade advisors. You're going to hear a lot of that. It's already in the markets that he's putting down 10%. So what if he doesn't? Have you ever thought of that? 
because he is, after all, a very crafty and, in many cases, very successful trade negotiator overall. You ever thought of the fact that they're saying that he's going to slap 10% tariffs? My thing is another thing, and one last thing I'll tell you. We played Boeing very well. I wish I had a lot more of Boeing, I'll be honest with you. All right? But it was a recommendation, and we played it very well. If this, if, he, if this was true, that he was going to slap 20%, well, that's what they announced, right? I mean, not announced. Bloomberg broke some news on named forces again. 20% tariffs. You want to see Boeing chart will be looking like this? Who's Boeing's biggest customer? Southeast Asia and China. Like good old Donald says, China. China is Boeing's biggest customer. So why the heck was Boeing going higher? You, who do you think buys Boeing? Louisiana? Southwest Air? It's the Middle Easterners, Emirates, China Air and all those airlines out there are the ones buying Boeing 737s and 747s and God knows 767s and back order to Kingdom Come for the next 10 years. So if their biggest market was going to hell in a handbasket, then why was going, Boeing going higher? Have a great evening, all. Let's have a great week, okay? Let's make it happen. Good night.